once they are successful they will attribute everything as fortunate because without them he would have not been what he is now so if i look back what really has molded me that challenges i don't think without challenges anyone is successful Illumani's 4G is back. 4G meaning guts, grits, growth and glory. I am Sadhat Kanan and yes this is the journey of a man who from the humblest background ended up becoming an iconic entrepreneur. A man running an empire called Thyro Care which sells wellness packages and has broken the realms of the ordinary. A humble endeavor is that after you watch this episode you grow as a human being you feel that yes we have made a difference to your lives ladies and gentlemen dr velumani welcome back sir hello the luxury of poverty is what we are going to be talking about absolutely you have probably seen the depths of poverty if i could say so but you keep using the word luxury poverty and luxury don't go hand in hand i mean why are you merging them together ironically we mean and we feel and we say luxury is wealth but actually wealth is not the true luxury it is an ability to withstand to undergo pains in life is luxury and that is given by poverty one day my daughter was doing some work she was in doing it the way in which i wanted her to do i held at her she retarded she said dad you had the luxury of poverty that time only i understood what my kid is missing what i had was that poverty which gives enormous energy in you i must tell you the empty intestines teach you the best in life once they were empty you know what is truly life all about so if people ask me where had your education people of my stature will tell uh, harvard stanford and kellogg i tell it's from the village and villages are the true universities and that village had unique power of teaching everything practical nothing theory and i believe had i not been a part of a village probably i might have remained scared of many things in life so if you ask me luxury of poverty is absolutely the true luxury and everybody should have undergone at least for a year or two what is true poverty all about so tell me when you look back at your life as as a boy in a village what are the lows that you felt were lows at that time but ended up becoming highs for you i did not have the luxury of having a pair of slippers or chapels entire village only 10 people out of 500 were having that luxury i couldn't have a full trouser because my father couldn't afford anything beyond a half trouser so if you look at it i did not have an access to dictionary atlas these are all essential things in schools to learn but i realize what i did not have probably were the strengths today to be what i am so these were all lows finding a third meal in a day was also a challenge my father told me that you come and work in the field whenever it rains so my school is having a break but all these things could not stop me scoring in mathematics 200 out of 200 so i believe school learning education all do not need money it needs focus and concentration and fortunately i had both of them and i became a very powerful student and then went ahead and did my college using my own my own earnings and what were these earnings where were they coming from 
I distinctly remember I have worked for 25 paisa a day. Uh, some odd jobs uh, somebody used to give me and 25 paisa a day. Then I have graduated to 1 rupee a day. When I was 15 years of age, I remember I have worked for 2 rupees a day in somebody's form. In my first year B.Sc., I worked for 17 days in a shoe shop and I was getting 6 rupees 50 paisa a day. That was my semester fees for B.Sc. second year. And B.Sc. third year semester fee was from one sari dukan where I was employed for 13 rupees a day and I, my job was to fold all the saris which every rich customer unfolds. So I learnt uh, a few things in my own way. I earned my own uh, uh, expenditures that were needed to complete my degree and then at 18 I had a degree in hand. Fortunate for me, I studied in one of the best colleges in Coimbatore district that was Ramakrishna Mission Vidyalaya where rich people were not allowed to go, poor only will go because the college fees was lowest in the entire district and I couldn't afford anything beyond that. So I believe that college, that compulsions, that situations is what I call as a luxury of poverty and first 18 years of life was the most challenging and let me explain you here, the one who struggled the first 20 years in life will never struggle for the next 50 years in life. But if you have not at all struggled in first 20 years of your life, there is a likelihood you will struggle in the rest of the life. So the good thing is that I'm going to have a good life because I've struggled for the first 20 years of my life. Absolutely. So great, that's such a, such a blessing in disguise with that statement of yours. But how did you guys manage your expenses, your whole family? I mean, you must be having a certain chunk that would be coming from farming. How much was that? How much would your father be making at that time? You know, Siddharth, my father was neither an employee nor an employer. You somewhere in the middle? Nothing. Nothing? My father was a pampered child. So he didn't know how to take care of the family. Wonderful was my mother. She knew her husband is not going to help her in rearing the five children. And she started taking care and lead of the family. Mind you, she only used two buffaloes. And these two buffaloes she used to graze for the entire day. And that eight liters of milk or 12 liters of milk that buffaloes gave was for 10 years supporting this bones and flesh and the intestine. So if you ask me, that lady was an entrepreneur that time itself, unknowingly. And those two buffaloes helped the family to live for 10 years. And that was my school days and even college days. And I finished a degree. Heads up to that lady who never gave up and taught true values to the children and ensued all her children became a graduate, unique. I was the first graduate in that village and my siblings all have finished graduation and that is hats off to her. We'll never be able to forget, she's no more, but I think the entire village know how she just helped children to get best in life. So when you look back, was there a moment in your life when you said, this is too much for me to handle. I mean, I'm fighting against all odds. The poverty is getting on to me. Every step of the way, I have to find uh, time, battle with people to find resources to move ahead. Was it tiring you at any point of time? Siddharth, in life, only two situations are there. One, one is, the problem is taller than you, or you are taller than the problem. In my life, I could not find any problem which was taller than me. That makes life achievable. That is the ability. So I always felt, why not? Look, I have a story to tell and that story is very motivating. How to lift a buffalo. How, I to, ask, lift a buffalo. how to lift a buffalo. If I, even if I ask you, you will tell, no, I can't lift a buffalo. But I will ask you a question. Can you lift a buffalo which is just one day old? Yes, I can. 
Two day old. Yes, I can. Three day old. Yes, I can. I have to continue to do so that you lift an adult buffalo one day. No problem becomes an adult buffalo. Every problem starts as a cough. And if you have understood it very early, no problem is taller than you. This is what I have sensed for the last 50 years. Every time before the problem starts growing, I, have, I will grow taller than the problem. The problem gives up. How do you grow taller than the problem? In that way, what I was and what I am and what I have undergone is all what decides. And let me tell you, once you have seen the lowest in life, that's what I call poverty. If you have nothing to lose and if you have all might to fight, the problem remains small. I don't know what is the formula there. But I haven't got intimidated even once by anything in life, even today. You don't get worried, perturbed, disturbed, threatened by outside sources. I think you get threatened when you got something which you don't deserve. You get fear because you got a wealth which you can't um, retain or you can't manage or you will have a fear of losing it. I think a man with energy, a man with conviction, a man who has no clutter, you just can't make him scared. So bottom line, you're fearless. Be fearless. Only problem with human being is fear. And only challenge the parents are creating to the child is by giving fear to the child. And this is what my philosophy is. My mother never gave any fear to us. She made sure that we faced problems by ourselves, fell down, got up. And today, all is because my parents did not pamper me, they parented me. What is the difference between pampering and parenting? Does parenting means being neutral in your approach? Does parenting being means uh, actually telling the child blatantly that, you know what, you've done something wrong, this is not possible? You should not be scared of the child. This is what very often I find parents are. They give before the child opens its mouth anything the child is asking. Because they have, they think that everything they can give. Good parenting is only giving what is essential for the child, not all what the child is crying for. Say no. Have courage to say no. The power of no. The power of saying no to a child is the most powerful way of parenting. Having said that, must take care of the basic needs and must make sure the child doesn't undergo any kind of paucity of resources for learning, for growing, not for enjoying. Let me tell you, don't take a child who is he not even seven years old to a seven star hotel because there is no star beyond seven star and the child at an age of seven itself has reached a seven star. Keep something for tomorrow. So this is my way of approaching children. My children fortunately are today frugal and I'm extremely happy. If your child is frugal, you don't have to create wealth for the child. Talking about wealth, how did you shape your personality when you entered college? Because you've obviously come from a background which had seen the lowest depths of not having money, not having a proper meal. Uh, when you entered college, were you low on self-esteem because there were students from different backgrounds? See, obviously, every college and a class also has an economic pyramid of rich children and poor children. Yes, of course. The poor long to become rich, long to be the rich, so they get mingling with the rich and get into trouble. I knew that I don't, what I don't have, and I kept myself very alone. And let me tell you, it's very, very difficult to explain the kind of poverty at that time when I was in college. See that the poverty was chasing, I didn't have enough money to go daily to college, the bus route, train student concession was the absolute luxury and unfortunately the train was reaching to the college four hours before the college and the train was leaving only four hours after the college. Mind you, four hours in the morning, four hours in the afternoon, I was forced to be in a railway platform. Mind you, there was not even a station master because there was only one train going up and down in that route. That four hours, I mastered 
Pythagoras theorem, Ohm's law, and what you call as Archimedes principle. And these things made the fundamentals of science and fundamentals very powerful. Mind you, did not buy a single textbook for my BSc. I used library only and I scored first class and in mathematics 200 out of 200. I also want to emphasize in 12th standard, I got 200 out of 200 in mathematics. But I did not have money to buy the prospectus of that engineering course which was 25 rupees and I chose to do only arts college, science college because that prospectus was 5 rupees. Mind you, for 30 days in my life I was a BCom student because the BCom fees was 100 rupees less than BSc fees. One great uh, chemistry professor Dr. K. R. Karthikeyan, he took me paid that extra 100 rupees and converted a BCom student into a BSc student and I salute him because without him I would have not been what I am today. So those are all journeys, those are all areas where somewhere God sent someone to help you to become very powerful if you deserve it. And I fortunately deserved. Of course you deserve, of course you deserve. Remember, Poverty is not a weakness, it is your biggest strength. The luxury of poverty is what you have imbibed on today's episode from a man who's actually gone through this journey, lived the moments of poverty, breathed poverty and yet said that is not a limitation for him, that is his biggest weapon to fight life. So in case you feel down and out about poverty, hello! Celebrate poverty because it empowers you to go beyond. This is me Siddharth Kanan saying, keep watching Velumani's 4G, a humble way to help each one of you evolve. Bye-bye.